Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to take a look back at the most recent week of the Overwatch League season, the fifth week of the Western Region qualifiers, as well as the first weekend of the summer knockouts for the Eastern Region. Lots of things happen, lots of games to talk about. Let's start in the Western Region as I normally do. Let's throw out my picks from this past weekend. Perfect weekend for me in terms of actual pick record. I didn't get the scores right on exactly every game, but I did, I did pretty well, uh, all in all. Lots of three-pointers across quite a few of the games. Decent 7-0 record, 2 on big picks. So it is what it is. Let's jump in and talk about the first of the headlines, which is, of course, that the Atlanta Reign, Florida Mayhem, and Houston Outlaws have all locked up spots in the playoffs. All three of those teams got wins this weekend, the Reign beating the Justice, the Outlaws beating the Eternal, and the Mayhem getting a massive win over the Boston Uprising. That puts the Uprising at 10-5, and five, so the best they can finish is 11-5, and five, while the Outlaws are at 12-3, and three, Mayhem are 13-2, and two, Reign are 13-2, and two, so... None of them can drop below the Uprising any longer, so the Uprising now have... They'll have to get in through the play-ins, but the Rain, the Mayhem, and the Outlaws have all managed to net themselves a spot in the playoffs, which is good. If memory serves me correctly, the Uprising, Titans, Shock, Defiant, and Spitfire are all locked in for the play-ins. I think there's only two spots left for the actual um, playoffs, or for the play-ins, still up for grabs. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I think uh, the math stands at the moment. But obviously, the three best teams in the world right now are the Reign, Mayhem, and Outlaws. The order, you can kind of decide that for yourself, but those are currently the uh, best teams right now. And so, not surprisingly, they are the three that locked up spots already. So we have three... Playoff teams overall locked in. There's still five spots up for grabs, three in the east and two in the west. We'll get the play-ins for both of those final spots in the west while in the east. We'll see what happens in the next couple weeks with the knockouts, and then we'll get the one final play-in spot to determine the final team that is in for that. So very good, very nice to see some, some playoffs implications already decided which is nice for that reason let's get into a bit of more specifics in terms of the matches though and let's talk about the end of the road for the vegas eternal they played their final match this weekend they played two games one against season outlaws and one against the san francisco shock and they were unable to find victory in either of those games meaning they finished the season with a record of 0 and 16 minus 43 that puts their total map wins i believe to five if my math is correct they won five maps all season um i i don't know if that's maybe they won two against um the valiant they won a one or two against new york um, so yeah they won a couple maps here and there but ultimately the external unable to really get anything going this year um, their original roster, their, their rebuilt roster, no real ability to get anything done. It's sad. It's unfortunate to see, um, a lot of the, the players on this team, you kind of wish the best for them and hope the best for them. You really want to see them succeed. You want to see them really kind of do something, you know, especially you think about if you're a Western contenders and a contenders fan, you know, rack attacks and we've had our eyes on for a long time. Um, he's been a, a pretty solid main support player, um, or, you know, yeah, main support player. In, in the Western region for a while, and, and you kind of hoped that he would get uh, that win in the Overwatch League, and unfortunately it just did not happen, which just stinks to see. Then you have those players uh, that they added in the middle of the season that are very, very talented. You know, to you and Knife. No real results to show from them. Irony with nothing. Finale, of course. Um, you know, Finale and Irony and Tuyu have at least played in the league before. But Knife, he's a rookie, right? And he looked very good when he played on this team, but they were just unable to get anything done uh, in the second half of the year. 
lots of problems with this team, lots of reasons for it, but it's a shame to see them go out the way they did. They certainly did not go out with a bang. They certainly went out with a whimper. They had a very weak performance and um, unfortunate end to the season for them. But life goes on. We'll see what happens with the league in the future. We'll see if the Vegas Eternal are officially finished. But if this is how it ends for the Eternal, that's rough. Um, you know, one win over the past two seasons is not where you want to be as a team. And so it's unfortunate to see that this is the final fate of, of this Vegas Eternal team. But that's kind of how the cookie crumbles, you know? Some teams are just not that good. Some teams are very good. Some teams struggle a lot. Some teams find it pretty easy to get wins. Some teams are, are, are built well. They're coached well. And they have the resources they need. Um, the Eternal just never showed any real promise throughout the season. And unfortunately, this is where they are. We will have to see if there's any kind of news surrounding this team sooner rather than later. Um, I don't think we'll hear anything until the season's over about the, the future of this franchise or uh, anything like that. But until then, we will say goodbye to the Vegas Eternal for the time being. Maybe there's another chapter for this team, but I would say seemingly unlikely. And um, their their final days, certainly not what we would have hoped for when you saw their kind of success in some of the seasons past. Definitely would have expected and hoped for more from them this year, um, but it was not to be. Next headline, the LA Gladiators finally end their losing streak finally end their skid of just back to back to back to back to back losses and finally get the dub with a win over the New York Excelsior. I think this is one of the most interesting games in terms of just the community perception of it. Obviously, a lot of the fans very, very high on New York. I think based on the fact that the Glads were on a really big losing streak, New York won the last time they played. Um, I was not. I thought New York would not look great in this meta, and I don't think they did. I think New York is going to really struggle in this meta when you look at what this meta is. It's uh, it's pretty bad for what New York wants to be able to play. Uh, you know, if, if New York has to find success in this meta, they have to put Fitz on Iliari, which is not great because if he's there, then he's not on damage, and I think that hurts this team. So I'm not surprised New York struggled, but not only did the Gladiators win, they dominated 3-0, easy 3-0, and... Not just that, um, they looked significantly more polished than we've seen them recently. I think this meta will be decent for them. I think it allows Kai and Kevster to play heroes they're very comfortable on. Um, Genji, of course, very, very, very good hero for Kevster. If you can get Kevster on Genji, you're in a very good place. Double flex potential for this team, decently high. They played a lot of Lucio. I think they played Lucio the whole series um, with Funny Astro and Cal on the hit scan or the flex support. So, it's an interesting uh, look for this team. They need a quite a few things to go their way. Uh, I don't know if they... I think they have to beat the Boston Uprising to get in. There might be a path for them to get in uh, based on tiebreakers with Washington or New York, uh, depending on what happens in, in their games. I don't think they can jump New York at all because New York has a three differential lead. Um, so if they lose, they can't pass New York, but they could jump New York if, if they win. Um, but I, the only team they could get above at this point in time um, with a loss would, would be Washington, depending on what happens there. And I don't know what the tiebreaker was off the Gladiators. So it'll be interesting to kind of see where it goes. But they're a team that, honestly, if they were to make the play-ins, I actually think they'd be incredibly dangerous. You just think about what their strengths are now. This meta that kind of can play to their strengths. They could be, in the event they get in, a Dark Horse team. Because honestly, as much as I think the, the the Defiant and the Titans and even the Shock to some degree look decent in this meta, um, if the Gladiators have to play New York again or the Justice, the Spitfire, I think they could beat them if, if they're able to kind of play the, com the comps that they're the most comfortable on. I think that would definitely be something that, that benefits them. 
Um, you know, you, like I said, you put Kester on Genji, he's an X Factor, right? He can completely take over a game on Genji. He can win you a game on Genji. You get to put Kai on something he's more comfortable on. You don't have to play a somber comp. I think that helps a lot if you're this team. So I really do think the Gladiators are in an interesting spot. It's very tough for them to get in. A win against Boston really is kind of the key for them. There isn't an easy game on the schedule for New York uh, next week. They have to play Vancouver. Certainly a losable game. Washington has to play Toronto. Also a losable game on their end. So Gladiators... At this point in time, still have a chance. They definitely could still get in um, if, if things go their way. It'll be very exciting to see what happens in that kind of final weekend of play. To see who is the team that's able to make it the distance, make it all the way to the end, and get into the play-ins as the final three spots are still for grabs. But I will say that, that the Gladiators really did look a lot better. I think that, that game they played right before the break against New York, really was a big deal. Because I think when you look at how they lost that game, they were up 2-0. It was pretty dominant, too, back then. Um, it was a very interesting first two maps that then just kind of New York really just kind of clawed their way back and managed to pull it away in the end. This series was definitely the Gladiators cleaning themselves up, getting themselves back together, and really kind of finding success in a way that is very good for them. So I'm curious to see if they're able to, to pull off that kind of miracle end of season, uh, you know, on death's doorstep run and potentially make it. We'll see what happens. Um, but they needed a 3-0 win against New York. They got it. So now their fate is not entirely in their hands, but they at least have some more control over where things are going from here. Now, let's talk about the fun, fun, fun that is the Eastern region. As good and as great as my bracket or my picks were in the West, my, wow, the Eastern region did not go the way we expected it. The first round in particular was kind of a bloodbath for most of my picks. I picked in every game, if pretty much every game, if not every game, uh, I picked the person that was higher in the standings, that had the better record, the you know the higher seed. I just felt like they had the advantage. They looked like they should win it. Um, I guess with the exception of I chose the charge over O2 Blast because I wasn't impressed with O2 Blast. Um, well, O2 Blast beat the Guangzhou Charge con pretty convincingly. Shanghai Dragons once again losing to SPG, this time very convincingly. Not in a 3-2 series. Poker Face gets the win over Panthera. That one was one I thought was the most likely to happen. Um, it did happen. And Dreamers gets the win over Rhodes, who I didn't even realize it's a new look Rhodes team after they dumped their entire roster, basically. So that's that's always nice to see. That's, that's a cool little fun, uh, fun thing. But... It, to me, what's interesting is when you look at that first round, every matchup between a contenders team and an Overwatch League team was won by the contenders team. O2 Blast over Guangzhou Charge, SBG over Shanghai, and even when you get into the second round, O2 Blast was victorious over the Seoul Dynasty. Now, Seoul Infernal did beat SPG, and Hunger Spark beat Dreamers, and Dallas Fuel beat Poker Face. So the, the, the three favorites in the Eastern region uh, won their games against the contenders teams. The three best teams, the teams we all agree are the best teams in this region, uh, certainly found success um, and, and relatively simple and easy success. None of them were really challenged that much by the contenders teams. I'll tell you one thing, O2 Blast wasn't challenged by the Soul Dynasty. Soul Dynasty were just completely outmatched by O2 Blast, which is a bit of a shocker. Um, Infernal SPG was the closest of the games between these top um Overwatch teams, SPG able to take a map. SPG kind of has their own style, and that's kind of the big thing with these contenders teams. They don't really necessarily play what you would expect all the time. They don't necessarily play the hard meta. They play kind of their own thing. But you look around the team, you can kind of see what their win conditions are. O2 Blast, you have Who Are You Genji, right? As long as Who Are You can play Genji, he is a dangerous player who can turn a game around. He can win games just on the back of his Genji play. He is that good of a player. He's that strong of a player. If he's able to just keep doing that, I don't really see how anybody else on this side of the bracket other than the Soul Infernal can stop them. Um, 
They're, to me, I mean, they already beat the Dynasty. Who else is going to be able to challenge them, right? Shanghai, I mean, they couldn't beat SPG, right? SPG has their own thing. Maybe SPG can find success against O2 Blast, but I don't really see who are you dropping really anytime soon in just the way he's been playing. I think he looks pretty solid. It's an interesting thing to watch unfold in the Eastern region. That's why I'm really glad we've gotten the Contenders teams. I really like the format with the Contenders teams. I think Contenders teams are really cool. I think they're really dope to get to watch play and compete. And we're seeing some of these players kind of up and coming. And I think the meta shift definitely helps. I think in a meta shift like this one where everyone has to basically change what they're doing, you're seeing how getting to just kind of play to your strengths really does help out. I'm curious to see what happens now as we go into next weekend and there's a change in strategy potentially now teams have had a week to get to watch vods and see what other teams did and you have time to kind of prep more and more properly and intensely for these teams which teams that looked really good in the first weekend come back and don't look very good in the second weekend and vice versa which team that struggled last you know this past weekend comes out and looks really really good in the second weekend it's a very interesting thing to look at it's a very interesting dynamic uh when you consider the way that the league is is structured for this tournament we really don't know what to expect we don't know who's going to be in the driver's seat uh come the next couple of weeks right and so i'm curious to see if any of these contenders teams are able to bounce back strongly i think dreamers is still probably the best contenders team they're just on the very tough side of the bracket having to play both either you know the spark and the fuel are on the same side of the bracket you got to get through both of those teams in theory to to get out <laughs> of the the knockouts, which is tough. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to do if you're Dreamers. Uh, and then on the other side, Ken O2 Blast makes some kind of miracle run. Um, I don't I don't know the likelihood of O2 Blast winning. Um, and if they were to win, I don't know if they could get out of the group automatically or not. It depends on where the Infernal end up, I guess. Um, if the Infernal finish third and the O2 Blast wins... Then I guess there's tiebreakers and stuff there. So I don't know exactly, but I think it will be interesting to see how we close out this Eastern region because the Canadian teams have been competitive. We're not going to get to see them in the play-ins, which, which stinks um, a bit, but I can't say I'm surprised. But we at least get to see them kind of try to do something here. I think there is some level of giving up uh, in some of these teams. Like, I think the rumors around SPG, uh, not SPG, Rhodes, is that when these, the, the players realized like there was no reason like they couldn't get into the playoffs really through the plans i think there was this sense of why would we even bother trying to do this if there's no chance of us actually getting where we want to get so like i said it's an interesting format it's interesting to, to kind of see what happens i'll be keeping my eyes on it but certainly the success of the contender teams the eastern region shows you that there is a lot of talent even outside of the traditional overwatch league teams and uh you love to see what happened in the East. You want to get your brackets right, of course, but it's always fun to see upsets happen. I prefer upsets uh, every so often to just like dominant performances all the time from your top teams. Real quick, let's take a look at the standings. You can see I have updated the Western region standings. You can see they reflect the teams that have made the playoffs and the teams that have made the play-ins. Like I said, I'm pretty sure, based on differential and all that type of stuff, um, that Spitfire, Defiant, Shock, Titans are in. I know, I know Titans were in. I know Spitfire were in. So I imagine if the Spitfire and Titans are both in, there's no reason why the Shock and Defiant wouldn't also be in. Uprising, of course, in as well for the play-ins. They should be one of the favorites to get out of the play-ins, but we'll see what happens. And then the New York Excelsior, Washington Justice, LA Gladiators fighting for the final two spots there. But this time next week, we'll know who our final play-ins teams are and which teams are still alive. In the Eastern region, nothing, of course, has changed there um, as a result of this. But next week, once we've gotten some eliminations, I'll update the playoffs uh, standings thing on the right there. So you'll see their average finish in a more clear view. So we'll know, based on the actual knockouts uh, tournaments, who are the best results based on what we've gotten in that area it was an interesting weekend not a ton of games so that really is all i have for you for today thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and want more like it in the future consider liking and subscribing come back next week 
or later this week for the, my picks for the final week, as well as next week for talking about what happened. We'll give a little preview of the plans, all that type of stuff, all that fun stuff. So if you're excited for that, want more content like that, like I said, consider liking and subscribing. Your support does help out a lot with the channel. Well, thank you all once again. I'm going to get out of here, though. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye.